Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers, and um, hi, I'm a carb addiction doc, and we work generally in the carbohydrate addiction space, but we see all kinds of folks with either metabolic disease or who want to look at their metabolic health. And um, one of the people in our space that I made a bit of fun of from time to time, because it typically doesn't fit most of my patients, is a guy by the name of Dr. Paul Saladino. So I'm going to title this video is When is Paul Right? And it's interesting, I have uh, a couple of anecdotes, but I've got one particular patient I just saw, and you'll see this guy's photograph in the video now. So James is gonna put that picture into this video. And um, this gentleman, 47 years old, 46, 47 years old, super, super healthy. Big time surfer, pure carnivore, just ridiculous, doing ridiculously well. Good mental mindset, well balanced, just everything good about this guy. And he's a patient of mine. And he came to see me a few years ago be, just to check out his blood work because he believed he was super healthy, doing everything right. Every, I mean, taking every suggestion and perfecting it. So he is the epitome of our program. So we did blood work on him. Uh, weight is perfect. Body fat percentage is super low. Uh, lean mass, I think his BMI is 23 or 24. Just absolutely exemplary in terms of how he's done by the standard metabolic approach. So we did blood work a year or so ago. And in the blood work, we looked at uh, we look at inflammation numbers and then we look at um, the biologics, his hormonal system and how he's handling substrates, protein, fat, and glucose. And as I said, he's very, very lean. So muscular but lean. So this gentleman is at a point where everything that his body needs pretty much has to come from his mouth. Yes, he's recycling tissue continuously in an autophagy way, but the majority of the nutrients and the calories that he needs should come from his mouth because he had, doesn't have a lot of reserve other than the autophagy. So as we look at what he's eating, and he's a carnivore, a high-fat carnivore, we look at his iron, his iron is perfect, his saturation is perfect. Ferritin is a powerful marker of intracellular inflammation. And his ferritin is nice and low. So there's no inflammation going on. Iron levels are good. His free testosterone level, very, very low. I like that to be in the ideally 60 to 100 range. He's a 23, 23.1. With a ferritin of 96, normally I want that in a male below 100 ID, but below 150, definitely. Testosterone is very low. Why is his testosterone low? This guy eats perfectly, okay? Is it low because it's not being manufactured, or perhaps because it doesn't need to be high. So we're going to come back to that testosterone in a little bit. Then we look at his um, lipid panel. Now, the lipid panel is less important for me, but it does give me some clues. So you all know my friend David Feldman. Dave Feldman is doing the LMHR, Lean Mass Hyperresponder uh, group of patients. So let's look at his uh, cholesterols. Total cholesterol, 598. This man is going to die of a heart attack in about 10 seconds. 598. Total cholesterol. Now, I want total cholesterol above 200, but 598 is through the roof. HDL cholesterol, 84. I want that to be above 75. Very healthy HDL. He goes long periods of time without eating, eats once or twice a day, pure carnivore. Triglycerides, hmm, 105 little high. Why? Why is triglycerides a little high? Normally, I want triglycerides below 75. So his HDL is good, which tells me that his glucagon numbers are going to be good because HDL gets produced during fat utilization. But his triglycerides are high, and this is early morning fasted. Hmm. Doesn't quite compute. Shouldn't be. LDL cholesterol, it's a calculated number, greater than 350. So outside, above the range in which this test can even be measured. And his VLDL, 16. Normally, I want that around 10. So he's making fat in his liver and he's transporting fat to his fat cells. How can that be? How can that be? But before we go ahead, folks, sometimes we drop out of the optimal range of ketosis, which is about 0.5 to 2. And the best way to get in there is to eat fat, but sometimes we need that little burst. And Cheryl and I have done a lot of experimentation. Ketone IQ is the best product we found to rapidly restore optimal ketosis. Whether you're gonna exercise, whether you're working, whether you need to be awake, 
Um, popping one of these babies in tastes a little bit crappy, but gets you into the optimal range very quickly and keeps you there for three to four hours. Look at the show notes and you will see a promo code that will get you 20% so, off. Let's look at some of the other numbers. Blood sugar, very respectable, 91. Early morning fasted, dawn effect. I have no problem with the 91. Would have liked him to be a little bit lower in the 80s, but 91 is perfectly fine. BUN, blood urea nitrogen, which is a protein turnover product. 27, high. 27, high. That is protein, excess protein being broken down into sugar and then into fat. Remember, this man's a pure, car pure carnivore. So BUN range typically for me is 18 to 22. He's high. Creatinine, high at 0.99. I like that to be around 0.7. None of these numbers are dangerous, but higher than I expect. He doesn't use creatine as a supplement. But his kidney function is perfect. Creatinine, high. BUN, uric acid, high. Sorry, not uric acid. Uh, urea, BUN, high. Electrolytes are perfect. Calcium is perfect. Liver numbers. Alkaline phosphatase, good. It's in the 50s, normal. No inflammation of the liver. But it's AST and ALT, the enzymes that convert protein to fat or that, can, that break protein down, convert it to sugar and then perhaps to fat or some proteins to ketones. AST and ALT, spartate transaminase, alanine transaminase. Normally, I like those numbers to be 10 to 15. So what is he? 35 and 70. Crazy high. Crazy high. Now, he's perfectly healthy. Very high. Hemoglobin A1c. Normally, I want that below 5.2. Fully expected in this guy that's super healthy. But his A1c is 5354. Not bad. Not bad at all. But higher than I would have predicted in someone that's this kind of a perfect specimen. So A1c is high. Triglycerides are high. Blood sugar is slightly high. AST and ALT are a little high. Hmm. What's going on here? Testosterone, super low. Magnesium, fine. Uric acid, low. Fine, I'm okay with that. Uric acid is low, 3.6. It's not wasting protein. Uric acid is low. Gamma glutamyl transfer is a marker of inflammation of the liver. Ideally, I want that around 10. He's a 20. But remember, his AST and ALT are also very high. AST and ALT, when they're in the bloodstream, are released from damaged uh, hepatocytes. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Thyroid numbers, perfect. TSH 0.83, low. TSH is low. 0.83 is on no thyroid medication. 3T3, lowish, 2.7. I like that to be 2.5 to 3.3 in the normal range. But both his TSH and his 3T3, which are a feedback system, both very low. Both very low. White count, 3.8. Perfect. No inflammation here. Hemoglobin, 15.3. All good. Platelet count, good, 207. No issues there. Urine, completely clean. But no ketosis. Here's a guy, fat adapted, very healthy, carnivore. No ketones in his urine. Hmm. I would have expected that. No ketones in the urine. Vitamin B12 is good, folate is good, H. pylori is negative. Insulin, 2.3. C-peptide, 0.85. Super low. Super low. Very, very little insulin with a blood sugar of 91. Very little insulin. Glucagon, 66. Normally, I want glucagon 15 to 20. Glucagon, 66. Super low insulin, super low C-peptide, high glucagon. Hmm. Clues, 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 clues. Vitamin D level, 45. No issue there. His calcium was fine. So what do we have? In summary, with this man, who is a picture of health, year, year and a half ago, low testosterone, low insulin, low C-peptide, Low thyroid hormones, all absolutely hormonally healthy, but a very high glucagon, high triglycerides or elevated triglycerides beyond what I've expected, slightly elevated blood sugar, elevated AST and ALT. Super healthy, super fit, 
super exercised. Normal weight. Lean mass hyperresponder, yes. Insulin suppression, absolutely yes. His pendulum has swung all the way over to being so fat adapted that he's insulin suppressed. So what's happening with him is he's eating a massive protein load once a day with fat. He's hardly using glucose because he's so fat dominant. And under the influence of glucagon, he's creating ketones, but not enough because his blood sugar is elevated. Why is his blood sugar elevated? Because he's converting his excess protein into sugar and then into fat. How do we know that? Triglycerides are elevated. Gamma glutamyl transferase is elevated. AST and ALT are elevated. Triglycerides are elevated above where his HDL is. So we know he's hormonally sensitive based on his HDL and his other hormones. But we know that he's pro processing protein too much. And he's not getting an insulin response because his insulin is super low. He's not getting an insulin response. Therefore, he's not clearing the sugar. And glucagon is adding sugar to his bloodstream, managing that sugar, and he's not in urine ketosis. That, folks, is a picture of insulin, insulin resistance, sorry, insulin suppression. And Ben Bickman talks about the same thing. This blood work corroborates that, and his behavior corroborates that. A very healthy place to be, but even though I'm not worried about that, his cholesterol, his LDL through the roof. Now, what's his CAC score? Goose egg. Goose egg. Not worried about his CAC score. So what are you concerned about with this guy? Number one, my recommendations to him were number one, one meal a day, probably not a good idea. Too big a load and then too long a period of time for someone who doesn't store very much to go. Let's break that up into two, maybe three meals a day. No insulin, no amylin trigger. And we've got a video coming up on amylin, A-M-Y-L-I-N. You should Google that, A-M-Y-L-I-N. Very important hormone just starting to emerge in the pharma uh, group of you. But amylin, no amylin, no insulin. So he's not able to have all the beneficial effects of insulin. So too big a meal, too seldom for who he is. One meal a day, excellent for someone like myself, still trying to drop weight. For him, not a good idea. He's converting excess protein into sugar, so the protein isn't of that benefit to his muscles. So what advice did I give to him? Keep living your life. But this is where the Paul Saladino thing comes in. We need to trigger insulin. We need to trigger GLP-1, which is the hormone in the gut that triggers insulin. How do we do that? What triggers GLP-1? Carbohydrates. So we got him eating two, maybe three meals a day. And I got him drinking a glass of milk, whole milk or raw milk, twice a day. And maybe even increasing some berries and some honey in his diet. The other thing you can do is a starch like a you can. But we increased his carbohydrate consumption quite significantly, once or twice a day, to trigger insulin. Not as a fuel source, but to trigger insulin. And we then went back and remeasured his blood work. Did that knock him out of insulin sensitivity? Did it, did it knock him out of, uh, did it make him gain weight? What happened? Here's the interesting thing. His weight was up by two pounds. <laughs> two pounds, two massive pounds of weight gain. Look at the pictures. Look at the photographs that you're about to see over here. Okay, he ain't fat. I'm envious of what he looks like. And there's a guy that's almost 50. So his testosterone, 46, up from 23. Testosterone's gone up. That's an insulin effect. Testosterone's gone up. Still on the lowest side, but it doesn't need to be high because he's hormone sensitive. A well-tuned car doesn't make a lot of noise, but his testosterone levels come up because he's not insulin, insulin suppressed. He's now insulin sensitive. So that's come up. Cholesterol, 241. Down from 598. Hmm. Because insulin controls cholesterol. And the paradox is that cholesterol production is controlled by insulin, but cholesterol absorption from the gut occurs with insulin resistance or insulin suppression. 
So before he was absorbing a lot of cholesterol from his gut. Now he's manufacturing more in his liver, but less absorption. HDL, gone down a little bit to 67. <gasps> it's gone down. Why? Well, he's eating more frequently, which is fine by me. Eating some carbohydrates. 67 is still a very healthy number. But he's triglycerides. 64. Significant shift downward. LDL cholesterol. 256. Down from somewhere higher than 350. So his, his total cholesterol and his LDL cholesterol have come down. They're still very high. He's still going to die of a heart attack in about 10 seconds and should be on a statin. Now, but yes. HDL has come down. Triglycerides have gone up. Sorry, triglycerides have come down as well. All of those numbers reflect a return to insulin sensitivity. So those are all good numbers. So it's not always the metrics we're looking for. Okay, This is individual therapy. Let's look at something else. Blood sugar, 81, down from 91. BUN, 22, down from 27. Creatinine, 0.76, down from just under, under, under 1. Kidney function, perfect. So his protein metabolism, his protein metabolism to sugar, his protein waste come way down. Protein use for energy has come down because he's now added some sugar back to his diet. Protein use for protein structure gone up. Electrolytes are still good. Calcium still good. Alkphos, 52. Beautiful number. Gamma glutamyl transferase down from 20 to 10. Inflammation of the liver gone. AST and ALT, 15 and 18. Good numbers. Hemoglobin A1C, 5.3. Not quite 5.2, eating some sugar, maybe a little bit more than I'd like, but still pretty darn good. No inflammation in his blood vessels. Didn't repeat his CAC score, but the last one was a zero. Thyroid hormone, 0.68. Free T3 got up to 3.3. But thyroid hormones are perfect. 0.68 on a TSH. Absolutely fine. Glucagon. Remember, was very, very high on the first one. Glucagon now is eight. 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 So his insulins, white cell count, urinalysis, now he's in ketosis. Ketones are positive, despite that low glucagon number. Trace of ketones in his urine, urine otherwise clean. Insulin, 2.6 and 0.85. Pretty much where they were. Pretty much where they were. But... He is now insulin sensitive. He's now insulin sensitive. And this is a good fasting insulin. Early morning fasting insulin is great. But now when he eats his carbohydrates, he sees that insulin rise, commensurate with his rise in blood sugar, and it drops down again very quickly. This is a type 1 or pattern 1 craft table, whereas before he was a pattern 5. And if you look at the craft tables, that's what we're dealing with. So he's converted from a pattern 5 which is equivalent to type 1 diabetes, all the way back to normal, which is a type 1, or pattern 1. And he's following a Paul Saladino diet. Maybe not as much carbohydrate as Paul Saladino, but he's a carb carnivore now and doing amazingly well. This is where the blood work comes in, folks. This is sophisticated stuff. This is very, very few people who ever reach this territory. I'm certainly not there. But this is what we do. This is what we do. And this guy is just a beautiful example of how incredibly well someone can do. And yet, despite trying to do this by himself, we had to tweak a few things. We had to counter some of his own beliefs. And look at how much better he is. So if this is you, if you want to know some of these numbers, if you want to check your own blood work, but this is insulin suppression and how we correct it. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you're interested in having a consult, text us, WhatsApp us, 561-517-0642. There will be a delay getting to see me. Unfortunately, I'm one person and we're really busy. But if you want these numbers run and done and read, because that's the key thing. Don't just get your numbers done and try to self-interpret. Because you'll be frustrated. Get it interpreted by somebody that does this for a living.
if you like what we talk about, leave comments. Please leave comments down below. Not everybody should carb load. Not everybody should go back to carbohydrates. There's a time and a place. And we have to take carb addiction into account. So please don't, don't say, well, I can eat carbohydrates. Don't use as a freedom to eat carbohydrate story. Know where your blood work is. Leave comments down below. And if you like what we talk about, throw us a bucket up at our, uh, our PayPal account. It's in the show notes.